Bacterial cells are tiny in comparison to animal and plant cells, and they're pretty different inside as well. They are prokaryotic cells, and we're going to look at how they differ to eukaryotic cells. Download your free study along workbook for this video and others in the cell biology topic. Just visit emmaditichi.com for your free copy. Animal and plant cells are both eukaryotic cells, as well as fungi and protista. We call them eukaryotic cells because they all have some features in common. They all have a cell membrane, a cytoplasm, and genetic material that is found inside a nucleus. Prokaryotic cells are different. All bacteria are prokaryotes, so we're going to look at a bacterial cell to see the organelles that it contains. So they've still got a cell membrane, and they still have a cytoplasm, and they've still got ribosomes. They always have a cell wall, unlike eukaryotes, which only sometimes have a cell wall. And unlike plant cells, it is not made of cellulose. The next big difference is that their genetic material is not enclosed in a nucleus. Instead, it's found as a single loop of DNA inside the cytoplasm. There may also be one or more small rings of extra DNA, which are called plasmids. And some bacterial cells may also have a slime layer, which is for protection, and they may have a flagellum, or plural flagella, for movement. It's important to learn the differences between eukaryotic and prokaryotic cells. Notice that prokaryotic cells also don't have any chloroplasts or mitochondria, as they're just so small that these can't fit inside them. Orders of magnitude are used to make approximate comparisons between numbers or objects. Here's how they work. The first step is to divide the bigger number by the smaller number. If the answer is less than 10, then they're the same order of magnitude, i.e. they're around the same size. But if the answer is around 10 itself, then it's 10 to the 1 or 1 order of magnitude bigger. And if the answer is around 100, then it's 10 squared or 2 orders of magnitude bigger, and so on. So for this example, we are asked to calculate the order of magnitude comparison between this phone and A, the ant. So here's our phone and here's our ant, and we divide the bigger number by the smaller number. So we're gonna do 14 divided by 1.2, and if we work that out, we get 11.6 recurring. That number is pretty close to 10, so we can say this is one order of magnitude bigger. I'm gonna shorten that to O, O, M, order of magnitude. Okay, and then B, we're going to compare it to the ladybird. So when we do a comparison, remember that we have to make sure the units are the same. This ladybird is in millimeters, so we need to turn them into the same units. It doesn't matter if you turn them both into centimeters or both into millimeters, as long as they're the same. Let's turn 1.5 millimeters into centimeters. All we're going to do is divide by 10, so we're going to get 0.15 centimeters. It's less than a centimeter, so that number makes sense. Okay, so we're going to do 14, which is our biggest number, divided by the 0 0.15, and this time we get 93. And that number is pretty close to 100, so this time it is two orders of magnitude bigger. All right, pause and see if you can do these two questions. Ready? This time we're calculating the order of magnitude comparison between this bacterial cell and A, the virus. So you need to spot which one's the bacterial cell first. It's this one, and it's one micrometers uh, long, and the virus is 100 nanometers long. So immediately we've got some different units. Uh, as we can see that the, the next one, the DNA, is also in nanometers, it's going to be easier if we turn the micrometers into nanometers. So we're going to multiply by 1000 as our number is getting to a smaller unit and that gives us 1000 nanometers. Okay, so now we're going to divide the bigger number by the smaller number. So we're going to divide the 1000 
by the 100. And that will give us 10. And so our answer is going to be that it's one order of magnitude bigger. Okay, B, the piece of DNA. The piece of DNA is 10 nanometers, so we're going to do 1,000 divided by 10. And that time, this time, it gives us 100, which, just like before, is going to give us two orders of magnitude bigger. Okay, now it's time for some quick questions. Pause the video, give these questions a go, and then press play when you want to go over them. Ready? Number one. Describe the differences between prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells. Well, prokaryotic cells always have a cell wall, whereas some eukaryotic cells don't. Prokaryotic cells also have DNA in a single loop in the cytoplasm and may have extra DNA in small rings called plasmids. Eukaryotic cells always have their DNA enclosed in a nucleus. You could also mention that prokaryotic cells never have chloroplasts or mitochondria. Number two, Kate says that because bacterial cells don't have a nucleus, they have no genetic material. Explain why this is not correct. Well, bacterial cells still have got genetic material, but it is found as a single loop of DNA in the cytoplasm. And they may also have plasmids, which are small rings of extra DNA. How did you do? Now that we've learned about the main groups of cells, we're going to look at specialised cells like root hair cells and sperm cells. Click here to find out more about them and please subscribe to my YouTube channel if you're finding these videos useful. Thanks and bye!